End phase is our next topic for today. Look, their earnings were very impressive. Revenue was a record $725 million, up from $417 million in the year-ago period and $635 million from the third quarter. Adjusted for one-time items, it earned $1.51 per share, which was pretty amazing as well. Beat EPS, beat revenue really well. At the end of the day, Enphase grew better than most companies I've ever seen grow in the stock market in a single quarter. The stock was up to about $249 after hours yesterday. And then today it's now at about 220, dropping even below it where it was from yesterday. Seems like people took some profits and ran. Vitaly, you are one of the biggest Enphase bulls. Uh, people may not know this, but you have had Enphase for a very, very long time. It, it, it bought you many, many things in your life because you got mm -hmm. it so early. What are your thoughts on Enphase earnings? And is there still a case to buy even at this price? Yes, I keep saying that this is worthwhile to invest in. And you, you went over some numbers. That's great. But I think you're missing the story. You're missing the whole narrative, which is solar and EVs are not in a bubble. We're basically in a secular shift to, to green energy, right? Electric vehicles, solar panels, batteries. This is happening over the next 10, 20, 30 years. God knows 100 years even. But let's say in my lifetime, 20 years. If you were to think that, oh, now the stock is down, it's not worth dollar cost averaging because it's a shitty company, because it's down. Oh my God, the, the, the quarter was so good. There must be something wrong, of course. Let me go over a couple of things. One, people might look at the PE. That's the first thing. They might say, oh, I'm looking at it right now and I'll give you a screen grab. P is 102 currently, the trailing 12 months. The statistics of it, if I look at that, I'll send you a screen grab of this too, that the forward P is actually 45. Now, you, you saw, how how much is it growing? What, what's the percent it's growing per year, roughly right now? Do you know? No, I don't have the exact It's around 70%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Over 65, 69, whatever. 70% approximately growing. So once again, I go back. Do you believe the growth story of this over the next decade that we need to keep doubling solar to take over a, a large part of energy because we are still at around 3% penetration for solar in the whole world, which is, that's minuscule. I, I keep going back to that. That's number one. So and again, believe... Enphase doesn't make solar panels. They make the micro inverters underneath the solar panels, which are way more valuable than the panels themselves. Yeah. So a lot of people still think that they, they have something to do with solar panels. And I keep going back to, I hate reiterating it, but there's only two companies that make that are uh, that actually make bank selling inverters. One is uh, Power Optimizers by SolarEdge. And the other one is micro inverters by Enphase, which is obviously growing better than the SolarEdge Power Optimizers. And there's a reason for that. Watch another video. Okay, so that's number one. The P is not, the forward P is not terrible. It's 45, considering the growth that's happening at 70%. Okay, that's number one. Number two, let me go into Badri's call. This is very important now. This is what he said. We reported a record quarterly revenue, $724 million. We know that. We shipped approximately 4.9 million microinverters and 122 megawatt hours of batteries. Okay, so why is this critical? Because if you know when you followed Enphase for a while, Last year, they shipped around 3 million per quarter microinverters. This year, they had a run rate of 5 million per quarter. Do you want to know what it is for 2023 by the end of it? What Do you it? know what it is? No. This is important. You should know if you're, if you're being bearish on Enphase, they're planning to do 10 million microinverters per quarter by the end of 2023. Not currently. Wow. I think it's 6 million by quarter one. So my point is, if they're growing doubling capacity, why would you do that? Is there a reason you would do that? So the people who are fearful of the short term event phase and think that, oh, it's going down now. I shouldn't dollar cost average because it's going to keep going down. Yeah, possible. I want it to keep going down and I have a lot of shares. So you have to understand the narrative. The people who don't understand the narrative. I get you. You're afraid because you don't get the whole picture because you only see a company that's valued at 100 P trailing 12 months. 50p forward and you think that's too much in this environment where you think it should be probably what 20 is that a fair assessment that yeah. that's what people think it should be yeah why would a company that is growing at 70 percent be valued at a 20 p can you can you find any reasonable logic to this it's a good point i, I mean I, I i get everything you're saying right here and again i'm not bearish on it i'm trying to understand the story as much as you are explaining it to me the one thing i do want you to comment on is insider selling i mean 220 does still feel a little bit high given insiders have been are insiders selling right now at 200 or 220 or are they selling at 300 when it was a more at 300 yeah so it really matters that too and obviously when insiders sell we should pay attention i'm not saying no but a lot of those guys get options and they and they get it for what are they two bucks 10 bucks 20 bucks they paid for those shares like they want to take their profits so 
eventually my goal is to take profits, obviously at a higher rate, but that's because I'm not an insider. I don't have all these options, right? So right. I think it's okay when insiders sell. Uh, it's not great, of course, because then it looks bad. But, uh, you know, as the price drops, and I really do hope it does, because I'm actually angry every time I see it go up. Like when I saw it rush up yesterday, I was not happy, by the way. I'm glad it's down today because now I'm looking at, oh, how can I make money on this? Because as it's going down, I want to buy more shares or I want to buy some call options for the future. Or even I've sold a put yesterday, by the way. So what's the strike? The strike was $200. Okay. Uh, January 2025 put. Do you know what they paid me for that? No. How much do they pay you? $50 a share. Wow. So what does that mean I made in one day? $40? Good math, Mitt. So hold on. You, you, how much did you put up as a collateral? Two, uh, 100 well, shares. You, times... need, you need 20 grand. So if you're doing a strike of, of 20 grand, gotcha, 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 you gotcha, need gotcha. collateral of 20 grand. Right. But having said that, they paid me $50 a share. That's $5,000. Now, what does that mean? It has to drop below 150 which... Honestly, I'd be buying it like a madman anyway. So my buys are set up under 200 bucks. So I figured if I'm willing to buy it at the 190, 180, 170 as it, as it falls, I'm willing to buy it at 150. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that is the only time I do these, these kinds of strategies when I'm willing to buy the stocks. I don't do them on shit stonks, as we say. I only do them on high quality companies that are growing 70%. So if it keeps crashing, it is something I want to buy. And I'm sorry for being so passionate about it, but I really right. do love this company. No, this is good. We're going to talk about Enphase a lot more and more. Obviously, I've been super interested in the story, and I've been wanting to buy at 200, as you said. 200 is the right price, but it's or lower. Up. I'm ex I'm ho hoping lower. for lower. I'm actually hoping for around 160, 170 is like sort of that good area to accumulate a lot of shares. I don't know if it'll go lower than that, but oh man, oh man, am I buying? Yeah, when I saw it run up to 250 yesterday, I was also annoyed because like I've been waiting again because you've been telling me the story. So I'm like, all right, but 220 still seemed like a little bit too much at the moment. So like, let's get it down to 200. And uh, then it ran up to 250, but it seems like everyone took their profits. And now it's back down to 220. And we'll see if it goes lower. You have to decide if it's worth dollar cost averaging on this. But uh, I would say if you don't have any shares, like if I didn't have any shares, I would be scared that I'm not a part of the story for the next 10 years. All right.